Hello and welcome to our 3D Slicer tutorial on basic segmentation. In this video we're going to go over a few of the basic tools in your segmentation toolkit on 3D Slicer to help you take your data and segment out different materials whether you're studying soft tissue or hard tissue so that you can have that for publication, for collecting data, or creating 3D models. So here we have our main slicer window so let's just get comfortable with um, the different things in the viewing box here. So over here on my right, you see that I've already loaded in the volume that we're going to use today, which is a primate model of a skull and a few vertebra. Um, in this upper right hand box, we have our 3D viewer. So once we have started segmenting or produced a model, we can make it show up in this 3D space to be able to view it and rotate it. The first thing you're going to want to do is organize your workspace in the way that's going to be most helpful for your project. So if you go up here to this top button, you can change the orientation of these windows. So later on, if it's more helpful to you to just visualize one slice, you can always change your window in that way. But just to begin the segmentation process, I usually use either conventional, uh, four up, or sometimes I go back and forth to uh, 3D only. So for now, we're just going to keep it on conventional where I can see the different perspectives of my volume and I can see my 3D workspace right here. All right, to begin segmentation, we're going to go over here to the left and click the Add button. So we've added a material. You can rename this by double clicking, and I'm going to be segmenting out the skull. And then to actually begin to segment out a tissue, and I'm going to be segmenting out the hard tissue of the skull, you go down here to your effects. So this is what we're going to be exploring today is the different, um, some of the different effects that you can use. So the first one we'll try is threshold. So by establishing a threshold, you're picking what density of material you want to put into your segmentation material folder right here that we've labeled as skull. So after I click threshold, you'll see over here in the right on my volume that a portion of the volume has been highlighted in green. So I'm going to move this bar, the shift bar, and as I move it, different material on that volume is going to be selected. So depending on what I want to study, whether it's muscle tissue, vasculature, um, skeletal tissue, then you would change that threshold range to cover or to highlight the material that you want to be segmenting out. So it can be really helpful to then switch to say green slice only. And if you're studying really fine structures in say nasal terminals or around the orbits, and you want to make sure that these very thin bones that you can see here are captured, then you're going to want to zoom up and adjust that threshold until you're actually capturing that material. So I've just switched back to our conventional view using this button at the top. And now that I've set my threshold, I'm going to click apply. So now that threshold has been applied to this skull material that I made. Now from here, if this was a full model of the entire animal, I'd want to crop it down before I showed it in the 3D space. But because this is just the skull, I'm going to click Show 3D. And now we'll be able to check that threshold to see have I underestimated, have I overestimated, and then adjust as necessary. So it's pretty far away. So I'm going to go up here and click this target and then zoom in. So it snaps it into the center of your space uh, in this pink region of interest box. And this threshold looks pretty good. So if there was a bunch of extra bone or if there were um, a bunch of holes in your model, you'd want to adjust that threshold. For now, this is looking pretty good. Now in this first video, we're just going to cover thresholding, scissors, and the paint, draw, and erase tools. So next, let's look at scissors. So I'm going to click on the scissor tool and scroll down slightly. Now you can use the scissors in both 2D space down here in your different volume perspectives, or you can use it in 3D space. So I'm going to, because you can see that scissor is highlighted in my 3D viewer, I'm going to click none. So I'm going to click off of the scissors and zoom up on my model so that I can be a little bit more accurate with my work. Then I'm going to click on scissors again and set these different options here on the left. So I want to erase inside 
And in my 3D space, I'm just going to highlight these vertebra because I want to take those out to isolate the skull and the mandible. And there it's um, cut those away. You can also do this in 2D. So I'm going to do this as an example and then we'll be able to see what happens in 3D space. So I'm going to go to my scissors. And for this, let's say erase outside and I have it set as free form. So I'm going to highlight just this space in this one view. It's going to retain everything inside that circle. As you can see in the 3D viewer, it erased everything outside of that. So this, I'm going to undo this, but this is a really useful tool when you say you have a CT scan of the entire animal and you want to erase everything but the skull. You want to isolate the skull. So if you go onto your scans and roughly circle the entire postcranial skeleton, then you can quickly just delete out um, everything but the skull and then fine tune it from there. The last tools we'll look at in this first part of our segmentation series are the paint, draw, and erase functions. And these all kind of tie together. So you can either paint or draw material into your model in 2D or 3D, or you can erase material out of your model or of your segmentation. So frequently with the work that I do, I want the mandible to be separate from the skull. So I can move my perspective in these different views until I see that where the mandible is connecting with the skull. And I'm just going to change my viewing here so that I'm only looking at the red slice. Now there are a lot of different ways you could use these tools, but it just takes some practice to see what's going to be best for your workflow. So for a race in this 2D view, you can see you can just set your brush size here. And depending on what you're trying to do, if you're trying to take out the mandible slice by slice, um, you can do that here by just click, cover that space, and let go. But there's a much more efficient way to do this if you're trying to separate, say, different vertebra or the mandible from the cranium, uh, which is the islands function, which we'll talk about in the next video. Similar to the erase function, that paint or draw functions are just going to add material back in. So here I'm going to click paint, and my you can adjust your brush size as big or small as you'd like, so I'm just going to keep it relatively small, and I'm going to paint in material back here. Same thing as the eraser, you just click and drag. And then the material is added back in to wherever you've painted it back into either 3D or 2D space. So that's going to conclude our first tutorial on the segmentation editor. Check out more videos on our channel for other segmenting tips as we keep going through all these effects of different ways that you can create 3D models and segmentations from your volume. Thank you so much to the Slicer Morph team for making this software free for everybody to use. And please subscribe below for more segmentation tips and 3D Slicer workflow tutorials from our lab. Thanks.